Hey everybody and welcome to the Katie Weaver Show. This is Katie. I'm your host. I'm so happy to be here. It's Thanksgiving week. So what does that mean? I don't know. Different things for everybody, I guess. <laughs> for me, it means I get to see my kids and spend some time with family. And it also means that we won't have radio for Thursday and Friday this week. So I'm feeling very privileged that my show comes on a Tuesday so I get to be here. I really truly hate missing so I am live it is the 26th of November it's 11 a.m. Pacific time and I just want to welcome you all here and thank you for joining me I also want to let you know we're over in the chat room and you can find the chat by heading over to 12radio.com that's number one number two radio.com click on the chat button and you'll be redirected into the Facebook chat it is a private group, so if you have not asked for entry before, you will want to ask to join the group. And Scott is standing by, and he'll happily let you in. That way, whatever you post in here won't show up on your wall. We kind of like it that way. <laughs> so that's the scoop. I am also live streaming this event from the chat room. So if you'd rather watch than listen, you can do it that way. And I am, I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff today. I know per normal, <laughs> so you might want to come and watch. But if you want to watch this event later, you can also find it uploaded to Domestic Mystic on YouTube. So that's the way to find it. <sighs> How are you guys? Everybody doing good? What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Or are you doing anything for Thanksgiving? Of course, it's just Thanksgiving in the US anyway, but you know, we take this holiday seriously. We're either going to, you know, eat ourselves into a coma or we're going to shop ourselves into a coma or maybe both. I was thinking about that uh, SNL skit that came out a couple of years ago that uh, whenever anyone at the table at Thanksgiving dinner brings up politics, they turn on the song, Hello. Have you guys seen that? Oh my God. If you haven't, you really have to go find it. I'll go find it and post it on my page after the show too. That's probably going to be needed at a few Thanksgiving dinners this year. <laughs> when people start duking it out about the impeachment and the upcoming elections and ugh, no, yuck. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I do, but only with people that agree with me, right? <laughs> that's how it goes. Okay, well, that's fine. Anyway. I'm glad you guys are here. I want to tell you that it's a new moon. So, because it's a new moon, we are on sale over at 12 Listen today. And I'll be there all day. You can come and find me. We have a great reduced rate. But I also have a, my 15-minute time-based session marked down to a really nice price. So, I'm going to put a link in the chat room. But you can also just find it by heading over to 12 Listen and look for me, Katie Weaver. So... That is going on and I'm glad. I'm glad that it's the new moon. I, I kind of felt like we needed to break free from that big full moon and get the new beginning that we've been waiting for. So this is good. And it's actually the topic of the show. I want to talk about the new moon a little bit. Um, not necessarily this moon, like astrologically speaking, because, you know, I'm not an astrologer. But I do want to talk about the energy of it, how it's feeling to me, and I'm going to teach you a few different rituals to consider doing with the new moon. I, I'm moony, you know, I'm a cancer baby. The moon resonates deeply with me and it's a time for me when I really, uh, I feel very drawn and compelled to do ritual of some sort. So, yeah. So that's what I'm thinking about, but I probably will have a little time for readings in the chat. So if you have something pressing or compelling, throw it up there. I just might be able to accommodate that today. We'll see. You know how this show goes. We go off the rails. <laughs> I posted, I made a brand new commercial this, uh, well, t I finished it this morning actually and sent it over to my producer. So I hope you guys get a chance to hear it. Let me know what you think. And here's why. I have hesitated in the past. One time I did a commercial, like years ago, I did a commercial that had a little girl crying in it. And I had hate mail from that <laughs> about how irritating that was, that One Two Radio is supposed to be a peaceful place. I don't want to tune in here to see here a crying child. I mean, it was like, you know, like a three second clip of a crying child. But anyway, it was too much and people were mad and Mark and I both heard about it. <laughs> and so, 
This commercial has a cat meowing, a dog barking, and a bird chirping. And when I was making it, I actually had this thought, is this gonna irritate people? Is it gonna make people's dogs bark? Is it gonna be a problem? Or isn't it? So, I'll take the mail either way. If you hear that commercial, let me know how it affects you or if it doesn't and you're totally cool. Because truly, I'm not trying to put anything on the airwaves that makes somebody feel anxious or irritated or over the moon. You know, not actually my goal. So, if you, <laughs> sometimes I don't know what's gonna affect somebody, you know, else, you know, maybe it's a trigger. So if you hear that commercial and it does something or nothing for you, let me know. I can handle the truth. I can handle the truth. <laughs> okay, guys. Oh my goodness. Well, we do have plenty to talk about, of course, as we always do on this show. And I wanna get some stuff done we have things to do. All right. So first of all, let's go look at Luminous. You guys know that Luminous Magazine is a little publication that I put out every week. It is a little, it's an online mag. I'm not going to call it little. It's actually big. It's an online magazine. It's a compilation of my work and some of my colleagues over at One Two Listen. And so, and One Two Radio as well. So I'm going to throw a link up in the chat room. But you can also find it by just heading over to katie-weaver.com and click on the Katie's Magazine button. So let's take a quick look. There's always a few things I want to make sure that I mention. So, of course, we had our Thanksgiving cover. I cannot tell you how much I agonized over the Thanksgiving cover. I couldn't find anything I liked very much. This came in first place, obviously. It's the one I chose, but I just don't know. Nothing spoke to me. So... You know, sometimes I find a cover, a picture, or something, and I know that has to be it. It was not the case with the Thanksgiving cover. In fact, I almost just scrapped the Thanksgiving cover and just did a regular cover. But at the end of the day, I didn't, and that's what I picked. So it is it is what it is because it's out there now. I don't hate it. It's just, just not one of the ones that I was deeply in love with. <laughs> I did call this magazine the Thankful Edition for obvious reasons. I was thinking about how much I need to shift myself, that I know that shifting to an attitude of gratitude is an incredible way to bring more goodness into your own life and the lives of others. And sometimes I think I'm not there and I need to be very mindful of that and continue to work on that. So that's one of my goals right now is to just continue to shift my focus into that place, that attitude of gratitude. So. That's just something in my head. We were, this weekend, um, we were in Boise, of course. Um, you know, it seems like I've been there a lot lately for football and to see my kids and, you know, all that jazz. Well, we were also watching on the internet a couple of our local high schools playing for the state football titles. Uh, not our high school. They, our high school didn't, uh, they didn't go very far this year in state. And that's fine. We don't have a kid on that team or anything, you know. But, you know, hometown pride, I guess. But it was actually our biggest rival that did win state. And I've watched these kids this year with a lot of interest because they're fantastic. And they have a really good coach. And I've been saying all year, they're going to win state. They are going to win state. And by hell, they did. And they beat out some pretty tough opponents that um, nearly always win state. It was pretty amazing. But... All at the same time that was happening, another little school next to us also won state. And that's a school that Mars is particularly rivalrous with. <laughs> and they're not even in our district. Like, I mean, there's no competition, but she just, she hates them for some reason. So anyway, these teams both won state and she was kind of grumbling about it. Like, I hate those schools. Why did they win? And I went, you know, Mars and it cracked me up because before I could get it out of my mouth, my son said, Mars, the best way to be successful yourself is to celebrate the success of others. <laughs> it's exactly what I was going to say. And I was so proud of him because he's retained something from his mother. But, uh, you know, and she kind of went, ah, I just don't care, you know. And I went, well, I mean, that's fine right now. But seriously, and it's true. The best way to ensure your own success is to celebrate the success of others. It's true. It helps. The energy of 
success, the energy of being happy for other people's success is really powerful. And I think it's the same kind of move, move, motion and movement. Wow. New words today on the show. Also, motion and movement. <laughs> the same kind of vibe that I get from that attitude of being very uh, mindful and grateful of those around you. It's the same kind of flow for me. But I've been chuckling about it ever since I was... Uh, a little blown away. I'm pretty proud of my kid for blurting that one out because honestly, you know, I'm like a broken record. You guys know. Kids, you know, your spouse. We tend to say the same things a lot, right? So anyway, somebody retained something that I said. <laughs> All righty. Last week, I talked to you guys about a new endeavor of mine. I have decided to bring a little uh, Sunday morning broadcast. It's at 9 a.m. Pacific on Sunday mornings. It is a live stream. I'm doing it in three places. So you can find it on U Domestic Mystic on YouTube. You can find it at Katie Weaver Domestic Mystic on Facebook and Katie Weaver Domestic Mystic on Instagram. So all three of those places. And so you can find them in any or all of them. I'm streaming all at the same time. I don't know why I'm doing all three. It just felt right. So we'll see how that goes. Honestly, I really liked the flow of the Facebook and of the YouTube uh, streams. The Instagram feed is a little different because when you do it that way, it is a, it shows up in your story on Instagram, which means it's only there for 24 hours and it disappears. So that's kind of useless. I mean, not totally useless. It pops up. People know that you're you know, you get a notification that somebody's live streaming, which is great, but I don't know. We'll probably stick with all three, I guess, for now. So anyway, that was the maiden voyage was this last weekend. And I put a link to it or, or put the video up in my article this week. I'm calling it Unchurch, Church for the Rest of Us. Why? Well, just because it feels to me like a lot of us are just kind of looking for a little bit more community, a little bit more of an opportunity to network with other people, especially other light workers. And maybe Sunday feels like a good day to be able to just, you know, uplift each other a little bit. So that was the plan behind it. And I was really happy with how it went. 20 minutes. That's it. I want it to always be about 20 minutes. I think that that's all it needs to be. I came from a religion in which church was three hours long every Sunday. No, we're having a 20 minute boost you up, give you some good news. My only segment is vegetable soup for the light worker's soul, <laughs> which is just an uplifting story every week. So that's what's happening. And so last week, of course, was the maiden voyage. You can go over to YouTube or anywhere, you know, or the, my channel on, uh, wow, Katie Weaver on Facebook, and you can watch last week's if you would like to, and then, uh, you know, coming up, we're going to continue to do this, and, you know, the great thing about streaming like that is then it's just there, so if you can't come, you know, during the time that it is, so what? Come later. Come watch it whenever it works for you, right? That's all you have to do, or don't. If it's not something that resonates with you, that's okay, too. Or if Wednesday night you're feeling bored and blue and you want something to pull you up, go watch it then. You know, there's no rules here. We're like the Outback. <laughs> so that's the idea behind it. That's what I'm doing. So anyway, I did uh, receive so many sweet notes from you guys that attended this week with some really great suggestions and um, affirmations. So thank you so much for that. I'm excited. This is good stuff. Okay. Moving forward. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Sorry, never mind. I'm confusing myself. Moving forward. I. <laughs> Sorry. I'm. A... I got sidetracked. I got really sidetracked, and now I'm. Now I've really lost my mind. Okay. Anyway, with 
all of that jazz being said, I just want you guys to know that I'm thankful for you. I am thankful for your contributions in my life. I am thankful for all that you bring to my world. I really am. I'm very grateful for all of the benefit I have from being on this network at one to listen my opportunities to be there with you to walk the path with you to laugh with you sometimes to cry with you and to be a part of your journey is the greatest honor of my life and I mean that wholeheartedly so I thank you for all that you bring to me and for all that you bring to the world because I know what you guys are up to you're a bunch of light workers you're working hard I know Okay, a couple of other things in Luminous. Kai brings us the Thanksgiving song. A oh, Thanksgiving song. It is absolutely beautiful. It's actually a song by Mary Chapin Carpenter, who is a country singer. It's a beautiful song. So I hope that you have an opportunity to read that and maybe go look that song up too. I brought you the tip of the week. I've brought this to you for I don't know how many years, but I'm gonna give it to you again. This is something that always happened at my Thanksgiving table. It's something my mom used to do. So my mom would get little chime candles and put on the table, usually yellow, red, she brown, you know, she tried to stick with like Thanksgiving -y colors, but it doesn't matter, right? It could be white or whatever you have. And she'd put a chime candle and a holder of some sort on the table for at every place setting. And then at dinner, before we eat, <coughs> She'd give everybody an opportunity to bless their candle with everything they were grateful for. And so essentially you take your candle, you hold it into your heart or up to your lips and you speak into it or you pray into it or, you know, however you choose to do it, but you imbue that candle with all of your gratitude, the people, the things, the opportunities, the places, the energies, the challenges, the whatever that has brought you what you needed this year. And then maybe you go around the table and you share a few of those things. We usually did, but you wouldn't have to. Not everyone's comfortable with that. And then you stick those candles in your holders and you light them all the way down and, and or burn them all the way down during your meal. It's a little bit of a candle magic at the Thanksgiving table, though, you know, some of your guests might not need to know it was candle magic if that's something that would frighten them. It's really just setting intentions, right? It's a beautiful little piece of work. So that is something that for me on Thanksgiving is imperative. What do you use for all of those holders? Because those little candle holders, those little chime candle holders are not cheap. <laughs> so, I mean, they are cheap, but you know, when you've got 20 people at your table, that's not cheap. Some things we have done, a shot glass with a little salt or sugar in it so that your candle will stand up in it works really good. Uh, little carved, uh, lots of times I've used little clementines, little, the little tiny oranges, and just carved a hole in them so you can stick the candle down in them. That works really good. Uh, as do little apples or little gourds, little pumpkins. You can make them out of Fimo, out of clay. There's a lot of ways you can do that, but those are some suggestions if you want to do it yourself. And if you're working on your table and want to stick with the harvesty theme, I like the oranges for that, but... Anyway, that's what's going on in my head, and <laughs> that's my tip this week. Okay. Let's see. Lots of good stuff. I, I hate passing over all of it, except for that we can't really get to all of it in the show and still do all of our stuff. So definitely look through there and read everything. Jenny had such a beautiful article about gratitude, by the way. I wanted to share with you my favorite essential oils this time of year. These are from Jade Bloom, of course. This is their holiday blend kit. I will admit that I have been diffusing these for a while, even before uh, Thanksgiving. I just can't stop, won't stop, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a link in the chat room, but you can also find them right there in the, if you scroll through Luminous, you'll find them there as well. But this is their holiday gift set and I love these. So there's holiday cheer, Christmas tree, and peppermint swirl 
and the peppermint swirl I've also baked with a few times used it in like you know fudge and you know other various fantastic things <laughs> it's good for that because the Christmas tree one really makes your house smell like a Christmas tree kind of fun so I wanted to share that one with you because those are oils that this time of year everybody starts looking for some holiday scents in their home and oils for me are my go-to to put in the diffuser so you could also put these if you have a wearable you know if you have like a aromatherapy necklace or bracelet one of these would be really fun in that too so those are some oils to think about fun stuff all right well that's luminous this week so luminous will not be taking a break for the holiday we're going to continue to publish all the way through i'm not a big fan of breaks over the holiday because i know that this is a time of year that we need to access each other. We need to stay close. Sometimes we need to be able to, you know, rub shoulders a little bit, be here for support. And so we're not going anywhere. We're gonna go ahead and keep Luminous uh, light and bright all the way through the holidays. So that is my plan. But also, have you heard the word? One Two Radio is not taking a big break this year for the holiday. In years past, we took a good solid two weeks and We've kind of started whittling that down the last couple of years. This year, Scott just really didn't want to do it. And he, this is what he said. He sent a note out to all of the hosts and let us know, we're not taking an enormous break. Our listeners hate it. They need our support this time of year. We need to be here for them. And why not stay? You know, why not stay and play? Why not celebrate together, celebrate the end of the year, get ready for the new year to start? So we're not. And I'm happy about it. I'm thrilled about it, actually. So we will be down, of course, on Christmas Day and the end of that week. And then the next week we'll be down on New Year's Day through the end of that week. But on the 23rd and 24th, we will be live. And then, of course, on the uh, 30th and 31st, we will be live. So again, since my show's on Tuesday, I get to be here <laughs> and I'm thrilled. So anyway, that's some fun stuff coming up with our holiday schedule, meaning there'll be plenty of one two radio for all. And I don't know if you guys got to catch the Psychic Cat show this morning, but she had quite the surprise. The second half of her show, she had Mark Husson. Yeah, Mark had a little snow day today and had an opportunity to be able to come and peek his head in and say hello at 1T Radio. So that is really exciting. How fun. So if you didn't get to hear it, definitely go catch the archive or the replay so that you can get a little dose of Mark. I know you guys have been missing him, so pretty fun. All right, well, moving forward, I did do, want to do a little singing bowl work today. I feel like this is a good time to brighten up everybody's light. I think everybody needs it. So this is going to be a little two-fold job. We're going to use a crystal singing bowl, okay? I'm going to play it twice. The first time I play it, I'm actually going to allow you or ask you to hold space that we allow the frequency of the singing bowl to completely clear your aura because, man, the empaths are heavy right now. You know, just all the strife in the U.S. right now has all of the empaths just... Ugh. feeling heavy and overdone and just yucky and so we're going to clear your aura first because nobody likes feeling like that right so we're going to hold space here we're going to hold the intention that the frequency of the singing bowl will permeate your aura completely clearing and removing anything that no longer serves you so let's do that first all right so just sit with me here Again, holding space that the frequency of the singing bowl will clear your aura.
Okay, so that's the first step. I've got to clear and clean it up. Yeah, right, okay, so that piece is done. So now we're gonna move back in. This time, I'm gonna ask you to focus on your solar plexus. That's the chakra right above your belly button. It is yellow. This is where your light is, right? This is where you emanate light to the world. And some of you have been feeling a little turned down. Not cool, right? So we're gonna amp up your light. So this time while I play the bowl, I would like you to envision your solar plexus. And I would like you to visualize that light getting brighter and brighter and brighter with the frequency of the singing bowl. Just really turning up your light. You might see it like a light switch or you know a little knob that you're amplifying or turning up your light or maybe you'll just watch it get brighter. You decide how that looks for you but the idea behind it of course the intention is that we brighten up your light from your solar plexus. This is your self-esteem, it's your personal power, this is the energy that you carry that you emanate to the world and the world needs you and you know what you deserve to feel great. So here we go. Amber said, my 14 year old son said, wow, that's making my body feel light and good. Yeah, dang right, it's supposed to. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. That really feels good. Okay, good, good, good. All righty. Well, there we go. That's a good start, right? Okay, so I wanna show you something. I brought a little show and tell today. I got something in the mail, well, UPS. I hate to admit this, but the UPS man is at my house nearly every day. And it's nearly always from Amazon. And that's how it is. Because <laughs> this empath doesn't leave the house that much. You know, I mean I do, I'm not a recluse. Not that there's anything wrong with that in my opinion. But I stay home a lot because I work from home. And you know, kind of like being home. So I do shop online a lot, but this is something I've been waiting for for months and months and months and months and months. This is the Whispers of the Ocean Oracle deck by our very own Angela Hartfield, a long awaited deck. And she has like five decks. I think she has a lot of beautiful work out there. You guys, you've got to have it. It's so gorgeous. The cards are so beautiful, so beautiful. So I thought it would be fun today to pull some cards for the new moon, some collective cards for all of us from her new deck. I'm so excited it's here. We're so celebrating. So anyway, it is gorgeous. It is all underwater themed, so beautiful. So the card, like the cover card is sea turtles and they are so pretty. I love it. Let's see, I wanted to tell you who did the artwork too. The art work was done by Ekaterina Golova, mm, Golovanova. Ekaterina Golovanova. That's the artist. All right, that's the cover. So fun, fun, fun. So congratulations, Angie. We could not be more thrilled for you and proud of you. Absolutely love it. So this is the same artist who did the uh, Lord Ganesh deck. So anyway, beautiful stuff. Very talented. So let's pull a few cards for the collective here. The 
only challenge I have with this deck is it's hard for me to shuffle because of my little hands. <laughs> it's not her fault. It's mine. Hi, Bernadette. Nice to see you. <laughs> All righty. So I'm going to just do a little hand shuffling because I just can't do the big shuffle shuffle. It's okay. And I'm just going to pull three cards out and just ask, what do we need to know as a collective about the upcoming new moon? What do we need to do? And what can we expect? Right? Pretty simple. Okay. You know, I read with uh, all of my colleagues' decks once a week here on this show, or once a month here on this show, but that was last week, and I couldn't wait another whole month now that I have my hot little hands on Angie's new cards. So we didn't. All right. So pulling three cards. So again, just holding space, asking, what do we need to know about this upcoming new moon? What do we need to do with this upcoming new moon? And what can we expect? So those are the cards that we are pulling. And seriously, this would be a good thing to put on your Christmas list, either for yourself, from yourself, or if somebody else is asking you what you want, duh, now you know. <laughs> All right, the card says, this is what we need to know now. Adrift in shallow water. Take a few deep breaths and reconnect to your inner peace. Notice the small things and appreciate them. What a great message for now. This is another sea turtle that is uh, on a reef and it looks like there are these little orange fish around. So I'll show you. This is why I said you might want to be in the live stream today because it's kind of fun to get to see, get a little sneak peek of Angie's cards. All right, so let's interpret this card. So this really tells me something that I've been thinking too, kind of along the same lines as the singing bowl work that we need to take a breath. Suddenly, it seems like, oh my God, it's almost Christmas. Suddenly, it's almost the end of the year. There's chaos afoot all over the place. What do you need to get back to your inner peace? What do you need to feel more like yourself, to get your energy back, to get yourself back? That's the question, really. What do you need? What I need and what you need might be different things but I'm gonna suggest a few things. You might need a massage. You might need a coffee date with friends. You might need to take a day off work and lay on the couch. Maybe you need to say no to a few things. Cut a few things loose this year. Maybe you need to get excited about the upcoming holiday and dive in. Maybe you need to put your decorations up and get excited about that. Maybe you need to decide that you're not doing that this year. See how it's different for all of us, right? So I'm not gonna tell you what you need because you know what you need, but I'll tell you what you probably need more than anything else and that's some boundaries around what makes you happy, what brings you joy and what doesn't, right? That's where it's at. If it brings you joy to attend a lot of holiday functions and you love it, great. If it doesn't, no. The answer's no, right? If it brings you joy to do a lot of shopping and wrapping and that's something that you adore, great. If it isn't, gift cards are fine, <laughs> right? There's no judgment there. Here's the thing. You know what you need. And right now is a good time to evaluate what is bringing me joy and what isn't. What do I need to return and restore myself to a good place of inner peace? And how do I get there? And then you start drawing some boundary lines because right now through the end of the year, things get pretty busy and chaotic. So you've got to decide what do I love and what don't I love, right? You owe it to you to get to do that instead of society and family and friends and jobs and whatever running you in every which direction. You draw some boundaries. You decide what it looks like for you. So that's what the first card is telling us. All right, the second card, this was our action card actually, persistent drive. It's all sharks. <clears throat> no, it's not. It's sharks and fish. Okay, <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> See what you desire and move towards that goal. 
It's time to zero in on your purpose. Use your intuition and instincts to guide you for your optimal outcome. All right, so I will show you the card. Is that not gorgeous? So cool. I love all of the light in these cards. You know that it's like the ocean depths, but she's got the light captured so beautifully. All right, so obviously we're talking about the new moon, right? We're talking about manifesting. We're talking about bringing things into our life that we want. And this card is exactly about that. This card is telling us, get clear about what you want and get going. Get moving towards that goal. If what you really want to do is travel, then set a goal. Look at the calendar. Decide when you're going and start doing some things towards that. Maybe you need to apply for a passport. Maybe you need to start making some reservations. Maybe you need to set a budget and figure out how much money you're going to need to do that and start putting it away. You're right. Maybe you need to cut some other things out of your budget in order to do that. Whatever it is, you know, that's just one goal, of course, but whatever the goal is, it's time to get organized, right? Get your little calendar out, whether it's a written one or it's just, you know, like your Google calendar on your phone and start setting some dates, some goals, Give yourself a few little deadlines here so that you can start accomplishing some of the things that you want to do, right? And as always, with big dreams and goals, share them with people that can help you empower them and do not share them with people who are going to crush them, right? Right? Right. Okay. You may see quite a bit of family this week. Do not take on their judgment and don't share stuff with them that you don't think they will empower, right? Nobody gets to crush your soul. And if they try that, get in your car, <laughs> right? You don't need any judgment. Okay. All right. And then the last card is the outcome that we were seeking. And the message is empower yourself. This is... Uh, I think this is a sailfish. Wow, my knowledge of uh, the ocean is now gonna really come into question. Somebody's gonna probably correct me on this. Please do uh, <laughs> when I show you this card. Empower yourself. Tune into your personal power. You are more than able to handle the situation facing you. Allow yourself to be the strong, beautiful person you are capable of being. All right, so here's the card, gorgeous right tell me what that fish is someone please okay a knife fish or a sword fish maybe ah anyway it's a fish with a very long pointy snout so someone will somebody's gonna set me straight i know <laughs> it's all good but this was our outcome card listen to that last part again allow yourself to be the strong beautiful person you are capable of being that's the outcome here so first, you're going to get some boundaries. You're going to draw yourself back into your inner peace. You're going to decide what brings you joy and cut out the rest. Next, our action card, you are going to get focused on what it is that you want to do and start working in that direction. And the outcome is you come out of this a little more empowered or maybe a lot more empowered. You come out of this able to really be proud of yourself and the decisions that you have made. You come out of this not second guessing what you decided to do or what you want. You come out of this a little bit more of a badass. That's what I think. So I love it. Okay. Amber says swordfish. Thank you, Amber. <laughs> Several people said they love this card. Me too. Very cool. So anyway, that's what the collective new moon is telling us. Pretty good stuff. So you know I'm going to read these cards probably tons more on this show because they're fun and they're new and I love them and I love Angela. So uh, Angie, we're proud of you and we love your new deck so much. Very cool. Alrighty, so that is that. Now I want to talk to you guys a little bit about new moon rituals. So first and foremost, if you do one, let me know. Post it in the chat room. What do you guys do for the new moon? Anything that you're deeply in love with or have to do every time or just feel drawn to do? Here's some thoughts for you. One of them, and, and this, is, this goes along with the moons a lot, but one of them is a cleansing bath. 
a moon bath always it just always works right okay so a bath a sea salt bath maybe you'll add some flowers maybe you'll add some essential oils right if you add essential oils you put them in your sea salt first you shake it up good to emulsify the oil so that it doesn't burrow down into your skin and make you very unhappy right come on learn from my mistakes guys because <laughs> i've done it i've made every essential oil mistake there is to make that's why i lecture about it because i don't want you guys to go through things i've done but <laughs> We don't need to hear about all of that today, but at any rate, the uh, a new moon bath ritual. So get into your bath, holding this intention. I am renewed. I am replenished. I am restored. I am open to new beginnings. I am renewed. I am replenished. I am restored. I am open to new beginnings. That is your little ritual for a new moon bath. And again, you might put all kinds of stuff in your bath. You might put some crystals in your bath. I've done that lots of times. That's kind of a fun idea as well. So just know what crystals to not put in your bath. Don't put selenite in your bath because it might ruin it. Don't put malachite in your bath because it might ruin you, right? <laughs> yeah if you're gonna put crystals in your bath no just look it up make sure it's not poisonous because there are a few that are so that's all all right intentions this is a really good time to set intentions so you can do a lot of things with setting intentions you can write them down you can state them aloud you can put them into a candle and burn the candle all the way down how do you put them into a candle well, there's a few different ways. You can hold your candle right to your lips and speak all of your intentions into it. And if I were you, I think I would be shooting towards from now to the end of the year-ish, right? I mean, we have a two-week new moon cycle and then we're going to hit the full moon. That's fine. But, you know, you can push a little further out than that. There's nothing wrong with that. So, speak into your candle you can take a little nail or little knife and carve some words into your candle or you can write down all of your intentions put your candle on top of them and light it and let it burn all the way down that's a great way to empower your intentions as well you can throw your intentions into a sacred fire this time of year some of you guys might be able to do a fire and some of you won't but if you have a little fire, here's a few thoughts. You can write your intentions down on a piece of paper and throw them into the fire, or you can gather up some kind of organic material. Leaves, uh, yeah, oh, Amber's gonna write on bay leaves. That's a great idea. You can uh, gather up leaves, pine cones, you know, any kind of organic material. Sit next to your fire, take them one at a time. So. You know, maybe you pick up your pine cone and you hold it into your heart or to your lips and you state your intention, you know. Maybe your intention is to take excellent care of yourself or to get a raise or to buy a new car or to set great boundaries or whatever, right? You decide that, but you speak it into that item and then you throw it in the fire and you let that sacred fire transmute your intention into light, sending it out into the universe in the form of smoke to make that thing happen. So that's a fun way to do intentions. So that's a few different ways actually to do intentions, right? And you might do them a little differently from that as well. You guys decide what's right for you. This is a great time to journal as well. And you might journal all of those intentions so that you can come back and read them later on as well up to you you do you you do it your way this is a great time to smudge the new moon is a great time to clear away all the energy there's a lot of different ways to clear your space we talk about smudge a lot because it's one of the more popular ones if you don't know what i'm talking about that means lighting sage and blowing it out and allowing the smoke of the sage to clear any unnecessary energy out of your space. 
If you're going to smudge, remember a couple of things. Always open a window so that that energy has somewhere to go because the smoke is carrying it outside. If there's a window open, <laughs> right? The other thing is when you're done smudging and done clearing, go back through and spray some rose hydrosol or rose uh, infused water all the way back through your space to help raise the frequency. And then do yourself a favor and spend some time for the next few days making that space feel like what you want it to feel like. When you smudge, you're clearing the slate. When you smudge, you're just getting rid of everything, right? You're just erasing the board. So now raise the vibe, fill it with what you want. Turn up music that makes you feel amazing. Watch a funny movie, have game night with your family or friends, if you can do that without fighting. <laughs> you know, do the things that make your home feel like what you want it to feel like. Meditate, chant, sing, whatever. You decide, but do things that make your space feel amazing. That's the second piece of smudging that sometimes gets, uh, I think, neglected. Now, what if you can't smudge? What if you live somewhere where you're not allowed to burn things? What if you're allergic to that stuff? You know, some people can't burn sage, it makes them cough. Uh, or, you know, what if you have asthma and burning anything isn't a good idea? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can make a sage tea. So you would just take your sage, pour boiling water over it, steep it for an hour, steep it really well. Put that in a spray bottle once it's cooled. And instead of burn throughout your space, spray your, your tea around your space. The other thought is if you cannot tolerate sage, if you just hate it or you're allergic to it, basil. So South Americans and South American shamans look at basil as a sacred purification herb, just the way Native Americans uh, have looked at the sage plant as a sacred, sacred purification herb. And so basil is really, really powerful. And you use it by the same token. Make a really strong basil tea and spray it all the way through your space. If you would like to enhance that, whether you're using sage or you're using basil, add some rosemary. In plant magic, rosemary is a really powerful enhancer. So it enhances whatever work you're already doing and pulls it up to the next level. So you can always add some rosemary if you need a little extra oomph or extra boost to the work you're doing. So those are a few ideas. Some people like to burn other things. Uh, dragon's blood incense, dragon's blood resin is one that a lot of people like to clear with as well. And you might use something else entirely. So trust yourself on that. But smudging right now is a really good idea. Smudge your whole house. Make sure that you open up the cupboards, open the drawers, get under the bed, all of that stuff. And then when you're done, stand in the center of that place with a pendulum. I just stand right in the center of the home, wherever I'm at. I do this professionally, so I'm out in people's homes all the time too. But when you stand out, stand in the center of the space with a pendulum. I wish I would have brought a pendulum. I didn't, but you can imagine, you know, envision that. Hold your pendulum and ask it, is this space clear? And if this is a pendulum that you operate with all the time, you know what the yeses and the noes are. If you don't, then, you know, I can help you with that. But if you get an all clear, great. If you don't, just walk into each room and do it again. Hold the pendulum up. Is this space clear? If you get a yes, great. If not, then stop, okay? Re-clear that room. I'm gonna tell you something. When I have, in my experience, the space that we end up having to re-clear the most are the beds, particularly like the master bed, the beds. <sighs> we dream, we convalesce, we laugh, we cry, we love. There's a lot of things that goes on on beds. And for that reason, beds take on an enormous amount of energy. And so while you're clearing, make sure you give the beds a good amount of your attention and the pillows too. But if you go back and ask, don't be surprised if it's that dang bedroom. <laughs> it's not clear that happens all the time. It's fine. 
It's fine. We can fix it. But uh, if you don't have a pendulum, Amber, just use a necklace. Just a necklace that has a good heavy charm on it is just as good. Yep. Just make sure that you know what yes is and what no is, right? Because some people, like for me, it's always clockwise is yes, counterclockwise is no. But some people, the pendulum moves differently for them. So you're going to ask first. So you'd hold it over your hand and ask it, show me yes. And then just hold really still until it starts to move so you can see what the yes is. And then tell it to stop. And then show me no. And then it'll start moving whatever direction no is. Sometimes it's not a, like a, sometimes it's just like a back and forth, the no or the yes, you know, everybody's a little different, but then you'll know what the yes and no's are. So it's easier to ask questions because you've already established that. But yeah, a necklace is great. And if you don't have a pendulum, you might consider uh, going and playing with some at a meta metaphysical store too and getting a new one. I think pendulums are a ton of fun. I've been playing pendulums for a million years. Okay, so smudging. So those are a few thoughts on smudging. A lot of thoughts actually on smudging, but this is a really good time to do a good clearing. So you might consider today or even tomorrow taking a few minutes and doing a good smudge. So, yep. All right. <laughs> so much to say. And now I need to try and recircle or recenter myself because that was a lot. I want to make sure I covered everything. So those are basically the, uh, those are the new moon practices that I wanted to throw out there. Those are all ones that I think are very useful. The only other one for this time of year, especially would be to give thanks and use the new moon as a time to offer gratitude. So I really always love the idea of pinpointing somebody in your world who has given you something you needed you know, called it just the right time or posted something online that was exactly what you needed to read or, you know, reached out to you, dropped by your house, sent you something in the mail, a teacher, uh, whatever, you know. I still think back to like high school teachers and occasionally send a note because those people, they affected me more than uh, probably most people, you know, in my world ever did. So, you know, there's just always those people that are special and in your heart. And I think that uh, the new moon is a really good time to make it a practice of sending a little gratitude, whether you send a, an actual note, you know, or a phone call, or you just send a little love from your heart. You decide how that looks for you. There's no wrong here. Christina said, I think I will be doing a bit of a clearing in my house later today. I can still tell the energy is a bit stuck. I am too. I was actually thinking that um, the pigs have been so naughty. The last couple of days it's gotten super cold outside so they're spending a lot more time inside and they've just been little punks and so <laughs> regardless of uh you know consequences and conversations they've just been kind of naughty but i was just thinking you know what that's what i should do too i really should clear really clear this house and see if that makes a difference in their behavior and uh you know all of that jazz we could use it okay Amber, if you didn't charge your crystals, all you have to do is smudge them and then put them in the sunlight. That's a really easy way to clear and charge your crystals when it's not the full moon. Easy, easy. Alrighty. Well, you know what happens around here. We have done what we do. I wanted to mention one note from Julia. She said, thank you so much. I so often feel my regular support disappears over December. Of course, I do recognize the need to take time away to regenerate and replenish. So I thank you, thank you, thank you. You're very welcome, Julia. We're so excited. So very good. Okay. Well, guys, we've definitely done what we do. We've talked down to the end of the show. Don't forget to come to Unchurch on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific if it is something that you're drawn to over on YouTube with Domestic Mystic, here on Facebook with Katie Weaver Domestic Mystic, or over on Instagram. So I'd love to see you there. Have a happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate, and if you don't, have a happy day anyway. Have a great rest of your week. Don't forget we're on sale today for the new moon over at When To Listen, and I would love to talk to you. So take care, guys, and have a good one. You've been listening to the Katie Weaver Show here on 1-2 Radio, where we're changing the way you love with the world.